Welcome to my day in the life as a software engineer. I wake up at 8.57 a.m roll out of bed to my remote morning stand-up, where we talk about the fascinating coding problems we're about to solve that day with my super interesting colleagues. After it, I check out my bank to see that my first paycheck has come in. Oh man, it's good to be a software engineer. Then for the rest of the day, I go back to bed and start coding at the pace of one word per minute. Software engineering truly is the best job in the world. Yeah, that's not really what it's actually like to be a software engineer. And there are many harsh downsides to being a professional coder that almost no one ever tells you. And all of these reasons actually led me, a freaking coding YouTuber, to leave my job as a software engineer and to instead build my own projects. And I'll tell you exactly what the reasons for that were and you might not have considered them before. But first, just for some context, I wanted to lay out the top three reasons why I wanted to become a software engineer myself that I saw as massive benefits of this industry. And for each of them, I will show you the actual reality of whether that reason is actually true or not. And be warned, because you will find that the truth about all these three things is a lot more nuanced than the tech industry likes to make you believe. So the first one is the juicy one. Money. 150k salaries straight out of college. Well, it's possible, but let me give you the nuance that you need to be aware of. So here is a report that shows the different salaries based on your region in the world. And in this case, based on your region within the US, because apparently according to these reports, the US is the only place that exists. But don't worry, we'll get into different parts of the world in a second. So what you can see here is that the average salaries highly depend on the area where you're working, which makes sense because cost of living varies highly by the area you're working. But the thing to understand is that the highest salaries, like 150K, like straight out of college, these are only really possible at the very, very highest cost of living places like San Francisco or New York. So I was doing some calculations on this for a tweet I was making. Follow me on Twitter, by the way. Thank you very much. And here is the harsh reality of these top salaries. In San Francisco, with a gross salary of 150,000, straight away 48,000 of that goes to taxes. Then around 39,000 goes to rent, assuming you're renting the average one bedroom apartment. 18,000 goes to food, assuming you're eating out twice per day. And then based on just some average data and some assumptions, you might spend an extra 27,000 on other stuff, which leaves you with net savings of 16,000 thousand eight hundred and sixty two dollars from that like massive sounding 150k salary and so for this tweet i also calculated the scenario where you have that same gross salary except you live where i am in dubai where you pay zero taxes and much less cost of living but let's put a pin on that because i also have some things to say about that in a second and now let's not even talk about going to europe like london where i used to be where basically if i only had my salary which fortunately enough for me was not my only income source because I also had this YouTube channel, that salary would barely have been able to enough to even get me by in London. So yes, a software engineer will make an above average income in almost any city in the world. But thinking that it will make you rich fast because of these high seeming gross salary numbers is absolute nonsense. To become rich and to do it quickly, you will have to see how you could use your coding skills to make more money as a self-employed person instead or perhaps in freelancing or something like that. I talk about more ways to make money with coding in that video, which I will leave down below. Next is another classic one that I definitely fell for freedom. Now I will say that as a software engineer, you do have a lot more freedom compared to the other corporate jobs that I'm personally comparing it to because these are the jobs that I did before, like consulting and banking. I usually only had one meeting, which was my morning stand up at the start of the day. And also pretty quickly, I was also allowed to work from home. But the biggest deal for me comparing to my consulting job was that the hours I was working were so much better. Every day it was from nine till five and not really any more than that. That is an unless you have a deadline tomorrow and your code still won't compile. So at least normally, like nine days out of 10, I had the time after my work to work on my side hustles. Or perhaps if you're a family person, you would have the time to spend with your family while still getting paid really, really well. And that is definitely a massive pro of being a software engineer. So it is true that in some sense, working as a software engineer is very chilled out and it does give you a lot of freedom and flexibility. But that is only when you compare it to the worst of the absolute worst, which is other corporate jobs. And make no mistake, as a software engineer for a big company, you are still a slave to your boss. You still have one employer that controls all of your income. And if they decide to fire you, like, <laughs> 
a lot of companies have, by the way, you are out of luck. Now you need to scramble and find something else very quickly. So that is why I always recommend to all software engineers to start side projects. Perhaps do some freelancing on the side. Code an app of your own. Not only will this make you a much better software engineer, but it will give you these extra income sources. And it is these extra income sources and not being dependent on one source of income that really, in my opinion, gives freedom in this world. Because you never know what's going to happen. And on the topic of working remotely, most likely the very first job that you work, you're not going to be allowed to go and work from Thailand, for example. At my job, I was lucky because very quickly I was allowed to work from home fully every single day if I wanted to, but not at the very start. I sort of had to earn that trust, but also I still had the restriction that I had to work from the UK, which is where my job was paced. So these kinds of remote jobs where you're literally allowed to work from anywhere globally and really optimize for taxes and things like this are something that you're going to have to work toward. Although again, software engineering is perhaps the best field in the world to work towards this kind of lifestyle if that is what you are looking for, but don't expect it right from the start. Now to take us to the third reason, which is also the biggest sort of unexpected thing that I really did not expect about software engineering, I need to tell you a story. So I had this colleague, uh, my first job, let's call her Sarah, she was really awesome by the way. She had basically done exactly what I had done, which is to learn to code herself and then like just transition into technology within the company, which is a really awesome thing that this company offered. And so what she told me was that she was very excited about coding and learning it like I was, but there were two reasons why she disliked being a developer. The first of which was that she was a really social person. One thing to keep in mind is that it just so happens that developers are often the most boring people on the planet. And like, I'm not saying they're like boring people necessarily, it's just like the culture of being a developer, like a technical person at these big companies, doesn't really lend itself to being social. So let me just paint this picture for you. Remember the morning stand-up that I just mentioned that was like the only meeting of the day and how great it was that it's the only meeting of the day? Well, even in that one meeting, just imagine that there's 20 people there and literally two of those people turn on their camera. So like literally some of the people I worked with for months and months, I still to this day do not know what they actually look like. I don't know what they look like because they never turned on their camera in their meetings. Like, how am I supposed to like have a human kind of relationship with people? Anyway, the second is that while coding, like learning coding is super exciting and super interesting, that is very different from doing it at your actual job. Like the third reason why I wanted to become a software engineer was that I wanted interesting work. I wanted work that stimulates my mind, that where I get to solve interesting problems. Yes, I do still think that software engineering compared to many other jobs, compared to many corporate jobs, is still in the big picture, very interesting. I love the act of coding. It gives me a lot of fulfillment and it's certainly more interesting than making PowerPoint slides for some insurance company or something like that. But I do have to admit, I mistook the excitement I had for coding my own projects for the excitement that I would have to code for the project that my company happened to be working on. I hate to break your bubble, but especially as a junior developer for a big company, the practical things you'll probably be doing are something like copy pasting some config files or like moving some button around some front end or something like that. Yes, that is literally what my first weeks at my software engineer jobs consisted of. So interesting work. Well, no. But it's, but it's possible. If you prefer excitement and more fulfilling work, you might want to work for a startup. Like I've founded my own startup now and I can tell you that the work in the startup is so much more interesting because you actually have a lot of responsibility and you're building something new and just the environment is a lot more exciting. Or if you're looking for more freedom, then perhaps something like becoming a freelancer could be the right option because it's more likely to you'll be able to work remotely and have a lot more flexibility around your clients and things like this. But then again, those options as well will have the their downsides. So what's the conclusion? That you should not learn to code and not become a software engineer? Well, maybe and maybe not. The real message of this video is not that you should or that you shouldn't become a software engineer. It's that you should see every career for what it is. Every single career has its pros and its cons. What you need to do is look at the pros of every career, then look at the cons of every career, and then look at what are the things that are actually important to you and what are the downsides of the cons that you're most willing to endure. I heard this quote, I believe it's from Mark Manson, and it is, is that the thing that you should do is the thing that feels like work for others, but like play to you. And just remember, 
Life is too short to do something that you don't want to do. And just because you're doing something that's okay is not a good enough reason to try to not go for something better.